So uh, I've, it's a pleasure um, to introduce uh, my panelists. So uh, now we have here um, Karla Fechner, who is a filmmaker who makes a very successful documentaries on sustainable issues in Germany. He has uh, just a new film, which is called Power to Change, which is translated in 20 eight um, languages and countries, and he was uh, already four times invited to Japan, and it's all over the place, and he's doing uh, documentaries since uh, 18 years and since 10 years for theatrical release. Then um, over there, this is uh, Christiane Dopp, who is the uh, film commissioner from uh, the Hamburg Filmförderung uh, Schleswig-Holstein, which is uh, the regional film fund in Hamburg, in Germany, and um, the Hamburg Film Fund uh, was the first uh, film fund in Germany which decided to develop initiatives um, to make filmmakers, future filmmakers or documentary filmmakers to go green, and uh, for this reason, they created a green label, which is called the Green <coughs> Shooting Card. And this happened in the year 2011, which was uh, the year when Hamburg was the green European capital. So they uh, were supposed to take some green actions. And since this green shooting card came out, more than 70 productions were produced in a sustainable way, and Christiane really goes to the set and uh, advises the production, uh, what they can do to improve their green measures, and uh, also checks, and she uh, also developed a whole uh, catalog with advices and so on. And um, then uh, over there we have uh, Paul Bradshaw, who is with the BBC Natural um, History Unit, and uh, he's a series producer, and he is the man who is responsible for uh, documentary series like The Wonders of the Monsoon, and also Earth's Greatest Spectacles, and uh, he is not only doing um, this, producing the series, uh, which are dealing with the wonders of nature, but also uh, with sustainable actions behind the camera. So uh, we will see something of it, we will hear something of it, um, which is very good. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, I uh, just give you a very quick uh, overview of um, green uh, production. Um, there's a, a lot of um, inspiration came actually uh, from, from Hollywood, where uh, there's a Producers Guild of America, and they have a green department, which is called PGA Green, and they uh, started to develop uh, best practices. So a lot of advices, uh, what you can do in a more sustainable way in any department uh, of a film. So, um, and uh, the biggest emission factors in the film productions are always transport and energy. And this is true, of course, for uh, feature filmmaking and for documentary filmmaking. And uh, of course, in a feature film production, there are much more people working uh, in the in crew. And so uh, um, there are other measures uh, you can, can change. And uh, so, uh, of course, production and design and costumes, makeup. But also in documentary, you have uh, these departments um, like catering, where uh, it's a big issue. You can have uh, maybe a one uh, meat-free day. You can avoid uh, plastic cups and uh, use real cutlery. You can. Um, do some waste management. There are plenty of measures every production can do and also save money by uh, doing it. And uh, so uh, it's, it's a win-win situation if you do it in the right way. But you have to have a certain awareness and you have to, um, of course, uh, um, invest some time. And this all uh, requires some kind of training and we have a big lack of this know-how so far in Europe, uh, but the situation here in the UK is a little bit uh, different because uh, here it's uh, already uh, with uh, the uh, BAFTA and um, they have um, um, created here in 
in Manchester um, a, a sustainability training for uh, every citizen, which is, has been adapted also for film and television people. And we have the, the honor today that also um, we have here uh, Richard Smith, who is the sustainability manager of uh, the BBC. There is uh, Richard. Mm -hmm. And he is giving this training courses for a green filmmaking. It's a one day uh, course, seven hours, it's free. And uh, I think uh, people really learn a lot and make a difference. And Richard can also tell us uh, much uh, more uh, about it. Um, I just uh, want to say, uh, quickly. In, in Germany, um, of course, this green shooting card uh, is a kind of um, a support and inspiration for filmmakers to go green. But in Germany, we have, for example, this problem that we have uh, many different regional film funds who are giving money. And so uh, filmmakers, they of course need money. So they have to travel with their films from the north to the south to the west to the east and uh, anywhere where they get a little bit of money they are shooting at this place and of course this is not sustainable at all the system and uh, so uh, it's a different situation like in, in France or Belgium or in England and um, in uh, every country uh, there are different initiatives so uh, for example in Belgium you have to uh, deliver your carbon footprint in order uh, to get the last installment of the film funding money. In Italy now, uh, it's uh, the other way around. They give you some extra money if you approve that you are shooting green. So uh, there are a lot of different uh, initiatives, but it all comes down that people have the awareness that they um, can uh, learn how, how to manage uh, a production in a green way and uh, especially in, in documentaries where so many films are dealing with uh, sustainability uh, and nature, it uh, feels uh, even kind of natural to do it. So now uh, Christiane can uh, tell us a little bit more about the green shooting card and uh, uh, how she practical does it when she uh, she's calling up productions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good morning. First of all, thank you very much for having me here, for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here. And yeah, we, as uh, Birgit mentioned, we started with a green shooting card many years before, and um, we are we are happy with this card. But of course, it could be much more because it's really hard to convince the people to motivate. But uh, we are continuing and I hope uh, we will get more and more people, more and more productions and also the, um, as, uh, the documentary uh, productions in Hamburg um, who will join this initiative. Um, yes? Yeah. Yes, um, as uh, we said, it's... Um, it's a kind of uh, a seal approved, this uh, uh, green shooting card, and um, we awarded um, almost uh, 70 times, and uh, it's, um, it starts with the, the consultation. I, I call the productions and ask, what about green shooting? And uh, most of them are astonished and said, what, green, we, why? And so um, I try to explain and uh, to inform what's going on. And uh, of course, I'm really jealous what's going on here in Great Britain because it's very great, especially what the BBC is uh, <laughs> doing here with the, um, with the training program because I'm doing this work in groups as well, the workshops. But uh, to be honest, there are maybe, I think... Um, 20 or 25 persons who are joining and if I look in this audience today <laughs> I'm really astonished because it seems to be a female issue because there are a lot of <laughs> female productions here, production manager or uh, film makers so well. it's very interesting and uh, it, it's the same in, in Hamburg because uh, we have a lot of female production managers who are interested in this issue so yeah um, as you see well, this uh, document can help and communicate because I think this is one 
um, big point to talk about what you are doing because there are some productions in Hamburg as well who are doing in green, but they don't talk about. So this is really important to mention. Um, yes, who can receive it? Of course, every production, documentary, um, even commercials. And that's interesting as well because um, they are starting now that um, they told me that the clients are uh, asking for green, uh, the green manner, the green uh, ecological, um, green filming. And that's really interesting because I think it's, um, it's really uh, the, the, the commercial in Hamburg, it's a, it's a big uh, production place. And so it's really uh, good to know that the clients are, are claiming for this. And uh, the conditions is um, we need to know about the production company, the information, the shooting time, crew list, and all the stuff. And it's even for the documentary. If you're shooting in, in this area, um, it's the same uh, information. And um, of course, we need the list with uh, information about uh, concerning energy consumption of the produ production and the waste uh, production. And these are the four steps. Consultation, then we need the application. Um, of course, I try to do a set visit if it's in the, in the area of Hamburg. Um, you can apply for this um, green shooting card from all over Germany and even from Austria and Switzerland. I got application, but uh, it's a, of course it's a local initiative. And um, if I get all this information back and the, the interim balance, um, uh, the awarding of the green shooting card is coming. And these are the, um, the areas of activity. I think it's, it's well known because um, it's the production design, the production office, the pre-production of course, the catering, transport and equipment, the certificate of carbon footprint, if possible. We like to, we, uh, we ask for um, a carbon footprint sheet and the lightning and technology as well. And um, for documentary, we, for documentary film, we have a focus on traveling because it, uh, it's including um, most of the time for documentary to travel around. And the daily consumption, the accommodation, it's quite interesting and the, the use of energy efficient lightning and uh, rechargeable power sources. That's, I mean, it's only um, some best practices. And this is our best practice guide. It's adapted to the, um, to the, uh, PJ, good. Yeah. <laughs> PJ Green of America, of US. And um, it, this, Includes, I, I got it here as well. You can um, pick it up over there because um, that's, uh, it's a good overview about all the, um, all the fields. And um, yeah, this is a very in interesting point because we need the feedback of the producers. That means I'm calling um, from time to time, I'm calling the producers and ask, what's, uh, uh, how's the reaction? What do you think? What can you... Um, can you um, reply from this, uh, from the experience? And um, most of them say it's really so great to, to have this kind of initiative because it's, it's doing something with the people, you know, because you get this awareness, this consciousness, and uh, this is really um, very positive. So they try to go on, but of course, sometimes it's not so easy to continue, but um, if you start once, I think that's my experience, um, then you, you try to get on and to, uh, to do this in the, for the next production as well. And uh, that's the producer's feedback. Yeah. What do we need? Of course, we don't need more ex expertise and uh, time resources. We need international standards that would be great to compare, to see what's going on in Europe and even in the US. And uh, I think uh, my colleagues here will uh, talk about this as well. 
and uh, yeah, about uh, management systems as well. These are the great potentials because um, we have the Hamburg Film School, Media School, and um, I got great experience with the students. I think that's the most uh, positive uh, working because they are so um, open mind and say there's no question, of course we take care of the environment and uh, we don't want to leave a big uh, carbon footprint. So that's uh, the best way to work. And uh, um, the people, they are older and uh, for long, for long uh, time working in the film industry, it's much harder to talk to them and to convince because most mm -hmm. of them <laughs> say, oh no, come on, Christiane, we, we do this like years and now we don't want to change, so uh, please go away with this uh, issue. And I said, no, you can't because it's so important. And uh, we have another um, media school, the, uh, the um, University for Art and Design in Hamburg, that that's, it's the same uh, experience um, that um, the students are very open-minded and said, of course, we go green and no question. And so, um, for me, it's really the most uh, interesting and, and most positive uh, reaction. And uh, that's why I go on with this uh, issue, because it's really <laughs> important to have some positive feedback. Yeah, this was a um, the green shooting card for a short film. The company is called Tam Tam Film in Hamburg, and they are located in Hamburg. And uh, they are my mm, best role model because they are so green. They take care of the environment and it's really great to work with them. This was the first, very first um, award to a TV series. It was um, shooting in, um, in Schleswig-Holstein in the northern part of Germany with all the crew. And here you have some pictures to the left-hand side it's a documentary film um, shooting in Rome. And as you see, they have this kind of bike with a photographer inside. <laughs> so they no, don't need a, a dolly or something like this. And did all the shooting with this uh, little bike car. And um, the other pictures are taken from a movie, uh, which was taken shooting in Hamburg as well. And yeah, I guess you know all these photos of separation and um, there's, a, um, there's one idea, I think it's quite good for the call sheets. You don't want to print anymore, so you can uh, put it on this um, table um, just in, in front of the catering um, truck and, and then everybody can go there and uh, read uh, what's going on today and don't need to, to print the, the call sheet for everybody. And um, I, I recommend um, a kind of, um, how do you say, um, the greenest tip of the day, the greenest... Uh, proposal? Yeah, proposal for the day, yeah. So some news about environment and um, about uh, water consumption and all this stuff. So you have to keep this issue alive. You know, you have to talk about it. So something. Sometimes I put um, um, a text uh, about um, the the figures, how many percent it's going to the uh, to carbon uh, footprint, and uh, that's really um, good to talk about this issue every day. You have to keep it alive. You know. And uh, the, f um, the film productions, um, I get this feedback that they say that's really great to put this on the call sheet or on this uh, table in front of the catering truck. Yes, and that's uh, the thing we want to continue. Climate change is now, there's no question, I think, and uh, we have to go on with this issue. And uh, I hope... Um, that um, you will join us. And uh, of course, this green shooting card, you can apply from everywhere. So if you are interested, in, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Christiane. So um, it comes down to um, the measures. Re 
reduce, uh, refuse, um, reuse, recycle, and you can also uh, pick up the best uh, practice guide uh, over there, and there's a table, and um, there we also put um, um, a magazine on sustainable filmmaking, it's called uh, Green Film Shooting, which I'm producing since uh, four years, and there are certain examples, initiatives, and projects that's described in it, it's uh, half English, so you can all understand it. Um, yeah, and um, now we would like uh, to go on uh, with Carl Fechner, uh, who is, has done this uh, inspiring documentary, Power to Change. And so, um, but uh, this film is not only about energy efficiency, it was also partly um, or mostly uh, produced in a sustainable way. I call cells as living uh, in a passive uh, house, which is producing energy, it's really amazing. And uh, he just spent little money uh, all by going uh, to the Ukraine and Brussels and all over Europe. So uh, please tell us more about it. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Um, Yes, um, Fechner Media is uh, doing, since more than 20 years, we are doing mostly films about uh, perspectives, about ideas, about visions, and the people behind it. That was a real uh, decision uh, which we did 20 years ago, uh, starting with our experience from, uh, let's say, war reporting in the Iraq war, which was very, very uh, successful. We did it on a, let's say, on an emotional way, and uh, very many people in television liked it. And then we, at the end, after this Iraq war, 1991, uh, we should uh, uh, make us clear that we are, were war winners. We, were, we made money with war. And this is uh, totally against my, my, uh, my, my ideas for what I would like to do films. And so we said, okay, this, uh, people know very much more the, about the problems and the, the, the situation and the dramas of the world than about the solution. So it's good to, to show problems. I mean, it has to be, don't, don't uh, misunderstand me, but uh, let's be, let us be the, the, the crew which is showing um, how we can solve it. And this was, uh, this started, already 20 years ago, this started a real change in, in a lot of, lot of subjects, a lot of uh, the, 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 uh, the subjects of our films, but of our way how to live. And um, especially, you know, now I say I'm a very lucky man because um, since 20 years I get to know persons who are really on the way to, to change the life and who had already did some, some decisions because they are part of our films. Um, so let's, if, if we, let's say, really uh, reduce it on some, some main points, it is, if we speak about green production, don't speak, don't think about green production itself. It is only a very small part, if we, to be honest. I mean, if we are traveling, okay, and all that, and I speak about that, but it showed um, the situation, the real situation, of a production company or of a, of a television company is very, very much more. And we should start to change it, let's say, uh, in, the, in, the, in the whole, in the whole way. So in my company, which is, let's say, 10, 12 persons, um, we start with, with food. So we, we are cooking for ourselves only with uh, vegetarian food. This is two persons of the company uh, one hour of the day, they are cooking. Um, because around us it's only this uh, quick, uh, yeah, self-made, self-restaurant, uh, so that you know what, what uh, that is speaking about. Uh, vegetarian food, sometimes vegan, it depends a little bit of the crew, and so we are sitting together once a day, which is not, which is not always like that. I mean, and is it cheaper know. if you cook yourself and so on? And it's of, it is, of course, it is cheaper, of yeah. course, for the people. And it is healthier. very, very good. They pay, let's say, uh, I think one uh, one euro for the meal because we are doing it ourselves. I mean, yeah, it is for me as 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 the boss of that company the calculation, but I never calculated it because I give two persons one hour um, free to do that and to to buy the subjects. But it is very important for us. 
It's a very important subject. Um, and this, uh, the food comes from uh, regional farmers uh, one, once a week, you know, that green, green package, or just uh, how it is named in, in, uh, in Germany. Oh, a whole from box a with greens, yeah. Yeah, a mm. green box. Green mm. box, yeah. So it's, it's existing surely in, in England too. Um, the second is, um, let's say, how to do the, elect the, the electricity which, which we use is totally, uh, electricity comes from renewable energies. So this is a very easy subject. And I'm sure that it's existing uh, in, in your country too. I mean, uh, we have to change uh, the producer. The provider, the, 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 yeah. The, yeah. So it is, you, you write a postcard and then you change it. And, uh, we did it, uh, we changed to a company which is very politically engaged too, yeah? EWS in, in Germany, which are, let's say, like something like a bit revolutionary in the beginning, but, but they, are, they, 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 they deliver electricity only from renewable energies. Um, we um, reduce the flights in Germany, in Germany especially, Nearly nobody, uh, my, my crew uh, uh, don't accept to fly. I, even if I would do, <laughs> like to do them, uh, they, they're going in night trains and all that. It's, we are suffering from this changing in the German train system too, that's which the night, the night trains are very much reduced. I don't understand that at all, but it is something, the life is crazy, yeah. I can very good remember the time when we went from Munich to Berlin in a night train with a car behind us. Yeah, all the subjects were on the car, and then we flew. Then, then we drove there with the train. The crew was very happy. We had good, good beds in the in the train, and it was very much less expensive than to go there. It takes one day, uh, and to take a hotel. Yeah, um, we uh, uh, me. I'm driving a. Uh, electric car, BMW i3, which is uh, total electric. It's not so, this, this subject, this is very crazy, this, this so-called hybrid. Forget that. Either it is electric or it is not, because hybrid is part, part, and then uh, if you really calculate it, you have 80% of fossil. So uh, this car is only going with, uh, with uh, electric and uh, with a small, 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 uh, let's say, motor which is charging the, the battery if you are running off with electricity. And do you have trouble to, to charge it or is it easy in your region because there are not so many electric uh, power stations for cars yet as uh, yeah, should yeah, that be? Is, uh, that is, if you, yeah, you have to work at it. My, my assistant really have to organize it. Yeah? But it is, it is coming up. Yeah? I, I went 20, into that last eight months, I went 22,000 kilometers with uh, this car and I, I paid 256 euro for energy. That's impressive. This is what nobody tells us. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think the BMW, they don't want to sell that car. Because if not, they would do it, put, put it in the advertisement and we drive nearly without any money. Yeah? If you drive a Tesla car, the, the, the electricity is uh, included. So you, you pay a lot, but then, let's say, if I drive 100,000 kilometers, I economize 20,000 euro. And uh, if you talk about ecological and economic, yeah, we have only, at my opinion, we have only subjects on the economical side too. Uh, if you see it in a total sustainability way um, uh, for ecological changings, you know? um, we have fair conditions to work because a part of sustainability is the most important part uh, is uh, are the people, yeah. So um, we have very much education, three years of education. We don't have this practicanten, what does it mean? Trainees. 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 Yeah, no, no, we have, we have trainees, academic trainees, one, one and a half year, which we really pay and which we give 10 years additional education time, uh, which we are sponsoring with 1,400 euro a year. So they are part of the crew, yeah, very, very much, this is academic. But the, the, the pupil, then the technical. Runners, you, you mean runners on the set? Yeah, this is, this, I don't know the word in English. Very, you know, very practicanten in German. Yeah, these are trainees or interns. Yeah, yes. okay, but uh, you know what I mean, that all those young, uh, engaged and enthusiastic people who are not paid. Isn't it like that? 
who are not paid. There's no name for it. Very, mu very, mu very much people, they, they are proud to be, let's say, part of uh, something, of a production company. That is forbidden in my company. Yeah? That's really forbidden. If you come in the company, you are paid, well paid. And, and at the same time, you, are, you do a trainee, a tra trainee um, yeah, let's say, program for three years, it's an official one, and afterwards you are uh, media techniques and law, media gestalter, media gestalter, media, media gestalter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is official one, so uh, no finish of this, uh, let's say, really um, unbelievable way to, to, uh, to use the, the, the ideas and, and the enthusiastic of young people for your business. This is, this is a, very, a very important subject too. We have very, very good experience of people who come as, as let's say, fresh from the university, let's 26, 25, 20, 27 years old, sometimes 22, very young, and uh, then they pass this one, this 18 months uh, trainee program, and after that, the, the condition from us is that they do at least uh, one film, a pro professional film, yeah, which, uh, which is normally not possible in, in uh, 18 months, but then they stay, we, we engage them, we, we continue it, and, and after that they have experience, professional way, and then they go, they enter the, the, the job, the job uh, life, which is sometimes in my, in my company, uh, Irja Bern, Bernstorff, Irja Martens, my assistant for the last film, The Fourth Revolution, is now uh, well known and, and uh, yeah, nearly already famous. Uh, young young uh, director, for example, or others get jobs in, in television or others uh, on, and, or in other companies. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, green filmmaking is also uh, very much about creativity because uh, sometimes you have certain requirements, things you want to do in a different way, but you don't have the solutions right there. So you have to think about it, you have to develop it and yeah. be uh, creative. And this is also interesting also for, for young people so you can improve and you can inv invent certain things and this also requires a certain flexibility that you think about it, how can we do it in, in the best way and how is it efficient, uh, also economic and uh, easy uh, to handle and of course there's a, a lot of freedom also and um, sometimes people also invent uh, things which can be adapted uh, by other ones. I mean Christiane showed us uh, this, this picture where, where people instead of using a dolly they had a bicycle and a basket uh, yeah. Yeah. up front, so they, sometimes people come up with very easy solutions. Yes, if, if, if you are once uh, uh, contacted with Fechner Media, you are, you are lost for the fossil world, perhaps, uh, I hope. Um, so, I mean, it is, um, the most important is that you see your responsibility for changing the, the whole system. This is very important. All, nearly all our films are about this subject, because we see that people are listening to that, and that's why we are doing, let's say, television, but we are doing this cinema, cinema, this very high standard uh, um, productions, uh, last film, the, the, where we show, um, finally I'll show you some pictures about that. Um, uh, the power to change is uh, more than one million euro uh, 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 budget. Yeah, so this, uh, we believe that this subject is so important and uh, to make, to, make, to, to mis not misunderstand me, the subject is, to change the whole world to a system uh, of 100% to a decentralized system based on 100% of renewable energy. This is the target. This is why we are working. This is mostly, uh, this is what, what we have in the mind and the, and the overview that is in the meta, in the meta uh, way. Uh, that's why, of course, we, we uh, uh, are living this, this is unbelievable that we're doing films about that, for me it's unbelievable we're doing films about that and, uh, and uh, not to live it. Uh, me, Paul, so you, you told about that, I'm living in, but it's a standard, it is standard, I'm living in a passive house, it is a plus energy house, where I'm working very often. It, is, it produces more energy uh, than it uses, uh, energy in total, not only like electricity, I mean it it's, it's uses only 10% of heating, uh, because it is passive, the sun is coming in in the winter time, like that, and there's very good isolation, and uh, we have uh, nine kilowatt 
uh, on the roof. The whole roof is photovoltaic, so it's 9,000 kilowatt hours we, we produce in Middle Europe, uh, and we use 2,600 kilowatt hours for, for us, per, and now it's more because of the car, uh, but uh, the, the S we sell into the, into the grid and make money by that. Good money, 300, around about 300 euro a month. It's not bad. Yeah, this, the most I get for my, for my uh, when I get old, uh, for my, let's say, my salary that I have as a freelancer, former free, freelancer. Um, so finally, we come to the production. And if, yeah, and if the production itself. And I show you some, some examples uh, from, the, from our news film. One part is that you reflect, uh, sh should you really do that? Should you really shoot that? Couldn't you use material which is already done? I mean, and if you really speak about that, uh, we should, should see the difference between uh, watt and megawatt, or kilowatt and megawatt. This is 1,000, 100,000 more. And this is if you, uh, okay, we use LED panels. If, is this clear? We use LED panels. Yeah, and I show you one scenery which is only with the LED panels. But to be honest, one flight more you can use for the whole production. You can use uh, only LED panels. So you have to calculate the whole subject. This film, and you show in the beginning, you see it, it is done CO2 neutral. Uh, this is, uh, there's a company which gives us this, uh, let's, let's, uh, yeah, this proof or whatever, they calculated it. We had to bring the figures, and uh, then fortunately they sponsored us. I, I think they paid 13,000 euro uh, to, um, to invest into renewable energy, wind turbines, or something like that. So this is balanced. Although we have had uh, a, a very radical reduction of, 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 uh, of um, using energy, which is, uh, we, we, we decided not to go to Japan. I wanted to film in Japan, and then we saw, let's say, the pictures which we could do there yeah, um, are really the same because if you have, we have restricted poss possibilities to film the real pictures there, and they were already done. So, so you would generate such a big uh, carbon footprint that it's better yeah. to use footage which is already yes. there? Yes, was, that was very important uh, for me because I had it in the mind but then I started reflecting and began, we went to Ukraine and showed the, the connection between renewable energies and peace. This was very important, very, very hard for the crew. But it is Europe, you know? <laughs> and we went there with, uh, with cars, not by flu, fl flying Play. there and renting cars. Yeah? Um, this is one, <laughs> do you really have to do it? Um, this was new in my mind by the way, because I'm an enthusiastic uh, filmmaker and I want to do my own pictures. Um, and mostly it is like that, but sometimes it is, is, uh, this is a very important subject. Not Japan uh, taking material and using it. Uh, you will see one scenery which where you see um, where we rented a bus for the, for the um, protagonist and for the crew, the whole crew went, took a bus, and we um, went to a demonstration in, in, in Brussels against the European Union. Uh, what, what was the demonstration about? Uh, it was against this new uh, power, atomic power plant in uh, UK, Hickley Point, which is uh, one of the most important subjects why I say we are responsible for the awareness of the people because we are media people. And this is the most important it. subject of this day. <laughs> so everybody in yeah. the audience is aware about yeah. the nuclear power yeah, plant. Yes, yeah. If you take the, the electricity from nuclear power, and this is not only carbon. Yeah. One second, please. No, 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 no. Stop. I, I just, I'm ready. Uh, I give the back, please. <laughs> and um, okay, this uh, we rented a bus. It was an idea. Uh, from, 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 from me as a, from, from the idea, but uh, at the end, when they calculated the footprint, it was uh, an important subject, because uh, uh, we paid the bus and everybody went into this bus, uh, the, the protagonist especially, it was my idea that they go to this uh, demonstration and we see them again, yeah, from that, uh, that thing, but 
they, uh, you took them there and we had very good um, pictures in the bus. Yeah. So, um, but the most, uh, there are very many examples uh, for that. And, and, but the most important is what you have in your mind. If once you have it in your mind, that, you're, that you have uh, really to change the awareness of people that you start with yourself, then you're on a good way. And the first step is the most important step. So enjoy five minutes or four minutes, 50 seconds of uh, power to change. This film has just started in Germany. Um, this, uh, the film which Birgit talked about is uh, The Fourth Revolution. This started uh, some years ago. This was the most uh, uh, successful film in Germany, called the cinema documentary in Germany, and was translated into this 28 languages, and we had more than 10 million viewers. So people are very interested about uh, this subject. If you show it as a vision, as a real vision, and um, not to show it as a, uh, as always as a problem. The problem is known, the vision is very often not known. And this new film uh, started in Germany, it is number three in the moment, um, in, in, in Germany, and we started in Tehran already, which was very surprising. Uh, we started in Warsaw, we started in, we had it in the market in Cannes, and uh, in um, October we'll start in France, with, with, with the distributor set with 200 copies. Um, uh, so I hope that, um, yeah, I mean, it shows how we can really change uh, the whole system, as I told you, and the person you see there is the one, uh, let's say, something like a farmer who has really given his life <laughs> for uh, yeah, producing uh, something, a machine, which takes uh, the waste, bio, bio waste, for pellets. Uh, one kilo or two kilogram of these pellets replace one liter of oil. This is this idea. And he was very, but uh, he really got, got bankrupt by that. But finally, something happened, happened and this you can. The, the most imp this uh, the, um, key scene you can you can see, and it is a part of one lamp. It is only done with LED lamps. Okay, go ahead, please. Thank you very much. Um, your film is really raising the awareness of this issue. <laughs> this is great. And uh, now we are, let's move over to Paul Bradshaw, who is uh, actually taking the audience uh, to the beautiful places in nature in the documentary series, um, which are still, still left and, and not uh, affected by <laughs> nuclear power or so. And, uh, Paul will tell us a little bit about his work and also the um, sustainable activities behind the camera and has also brought a, a kind of uh, a few uh, examples of uh, sustainable measures because with green filmmaking it's like uh, similar like with visual effects you do them and if you have done them in a very good way of course nobody can see it uh, see it on the screen so uh, please uh, tell us about your work Paul okay thank you um, yes, I'm a series producer at the BBC Natural History Unit, which uh, means that I send teams all over the world to film uh, wildlife and the natural environment. Um, recent productions, we've sent teams as far afield as the High Arctic, uh, New England, uh, the, the um, Kalahari, the Australian desert, Indonesia, Himalayas, so all over the world. So that's... Um, uh, two things to say about that, really. One is that, and, and, and they conflict. Uh, one is that everyone in the Natural History Unit is motivated by a love of nature and of the planet and wanting to share that with people, and that's the subtext of probably everything we do. And yet, um, the, uh, the consequences are this. Um, that, that's uh, one of my colleagues with a, a typical... <laughs> Very typical number of uh, bags. Um, judging by his appearance, I'd say that's at the end of a shoot and probably needs a shower. Um, but 30 bags, absolutely typical, uh, 20 tons of, of carbon. So, um, and to expand on that, here's some work that's been done um, across a, a number of uh, productions uh, showing uh, the different carbon footprints that uh, are involved in those productions. The green is, is, is the effect of transport. 
You see, right at the top is International Factual, of which um, we're a part. If there was another one that was um, sort of high-end uh, natural history filming, that would probably be twice as big, the, the green bit. So it's incumbent on us to do something to, to mitigate against that, uh, both morally, politically, but also uh, financially, actually. And, and that's one of the things that makes it most palatable uh, from the point of view of any production, is that usually you find that um, taking measures to reduce your carbon footprint go hand in hand with reducing the budget, um, which is, is in fact, we find on average, I think we save about £6,000 uh, where productions have deliberately tried to, um, to, to, to be greener. Um, so what I want to do really is just share with you a few of the things that we have experimented with and found successful to different degrees and hopefully that will give you inspiration for your own productions. I want to start with um, a, uh, a series that was shot in the high Arctic, not one of mine, but it's uh, The Snow Wolf Family and Me. Um, and one thing that we're very used to doing in the Natural History Unit is trying different technology. Um, some of it you see on screen, some of it you don't. This uh, is a, the use of a new type of uh, solar panel. Now, when you're filming hundreds of miles from anywhere, uh, production of power mm. for filming is, mm. is, is a big yeah. issue. And it's particularly sensitive if you're filming on, on the polar ice caps or near them. OK, so this uh, is, a, is, a, is a short film about that experience. Mm. So with a lot of these things, there's a bit of inertia in, uh, in trying them out. Um, uh, they can be quite fiddly sometimes. But through the combined pressure of, of, of budgets and the need to reduce our carbon footprint, we're trying things out, and some of those things are being really successful. Um, I'll talk now about one of the productions I was involved with recently, which was um, this Wonders of the Monsoon. I'll just play the opening to give you a sense of, of the sort of challenge we have as filmmakers uh, to cover a large part of um, the other side of the world in our stories. So I, th I mean, that illustrates a, a number of things. One is it's a marvellous story of nature to tell um, that I think is very important to tell for us to appreciate our planet. On the other hand, there are a lot of different places, a lot of flights involved to go to all of those places. Um, and uh, uh, so, so, you know, that, that gives us a, a challenge. Um, so just want to go through some of the ap approaches we took. Um, one thing we have historical difficulty with in the Natural History Unit is finding the right kind of camera talent around the world. Um, usually we take our own crews and our own equipment simply because we don't feel we can trust what we're going to find at the other end. But uh, on this occasion, we took more of those sorts of risks than we usually would. Um, uh, the example I've got here is... Uh, Right at the beginning of our production, there was a huge flood in northern India, which is something we wanted to film as a consequence of the monsoon. Unusually high um, in Kazaranga National Park. And it takes about three months to get your permits through. So we had no chance of getting anybody there. We knew of an in Indian cameraman who was basically a stills guy, but had done a few promising videos. We thought, well, we have nothing to lose by just hiring him. Uh, and so uh, he went and did, did it off his own back uh, and unsupported by us. Uh, and, and there he is, top left, Sandesh Kadur. Um, Kalyan on the right was another Indian cameraman we used. And what he produced eventually was really good. And he, now he's become a, a, an established uh, natural history cameraman that, that we often use. Um, and so we saved a lot of money, saved a, a lot of carbon as well. Um, and we also had a d different approaches to the power problem. Solar cells don't work terribly well on top of that mountain. We had to do about a week's filming on top of that mountain, which is Kinabalu in Borneo. Um, it's often cloudy. Uh, the days aren't all that long. Um, so we looked at a number of things like hydrogen uh, fuel cells, very expensive. Um, car batteries, very heavy. Generators, very noisy and carbon heavy. 
in the end, what we ended up doing was we had um, a charging station sort of um, down at the bottom of the mountain, and we had a bunch of guys, here they are, uh, who, who did regular sorties up and down the mountain to, uh, to charge the batteries and take them back up to the top of the mountain. That was the, the most cost effective, and uh, because we're using grid power, that is a preferable um, source of energy to um, some of the others, certainly generators. Um, another thing we've tried, uh, which has worked to varying degrees, but uh, I think generally very well on this production, was just combining shoots, um, which means basically forward planning and, and thinking how can we avoid taking you know, seven trips out to Borneo and shooting seven different sequences um, and do them all together. Um, and we went further than that, I and mean, that was in the production. One advantage we have in the natural history unit is there's a lot of filmmaking going on at any one time. And so we, we shared uh, some uh, resources between different productions. So I'll tell you a little story about this little chap is a ghost crab. Um, and in the dry season, uh, he um, is at great risk from a monster that comes out of the forest. I'll just give you a little taster of that. <laughs> okay, so an amusing little story, actually, that's a, that's a small part of it. It's about four minutes, but not worth send, you know, sending 30 pieces of gear up on a, on, on a jumbo. So we had another sequence about a proboscis monkey that was, would help the rationale. Um, but production downstairs called Monkey Planet uh, wanted to film these guys, um, the lutons or silver-leafed monkeys, um, who happened to be in exactly the same park. Uh, this tree that, that, that they're sitting in was actually fringing the same beach uh, as, as the crab was in. So um, when the crabs weren't coming out to play, very often the monkeys were, so it's a really efficient shoot. Um, and uh, it was a matter of turning up at the beach and thinking, well, who's around? Uh, and over the period of two weeks, we managed to put four sequences together. And so that's just another example of a, another story of different production. We did also try to work with other television companies and came close once or twice, but that's really hard logistically and in terms of um, what you're trying to achieve. A um, couple of quick words about more recent production, Earth's Greatest Spectacles. Um, this was another transglobal production. We had one film in Svalbard in the Arctic, one in New England, one in the Okavango Delta in um, Southern Africa. Um, one of the things we were able to do in this one was to use a lot of local crews and equipment uh, in some of the places, particularly Southern Africa and the States. Um, one thing we, we also did that we were, which was, I was quite uh, amazed at, um, was that we filmed a rattlesnake giving birth, something that had never been done before. To do it, it would have required someone um, flying over and staying there uh, with a camera for several weeks because no one knew when it was going to give birth. But we managed to save one whole person and flight and associated equipment by um, just uh, setting up the equipment on the ground with a local person uh, to look after it. Um, and we monitored it from Bristol uh, through the night, 24 hours a day. And then at 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, my colleague Guthrie, who was just about awake, saw something happened and he pressed record. Oops. What actually happened there was, I mean, the quality of remote cameras has got to the point where you can get great results from them. Um, but there's also a mixture there. There's some, some shot on a, a regular HD camera. Uh, we had a crew in country, and what they could do was we got the remote cameras going remotely from Bristol and gave them a call to go to the site where the, 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 the snakes were giving birth um, so we could put a whole sequence together. So a lot of these things are not that amazing. I mean, they're, 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 there's a certain amount of new technology you can use, but I think the key thing is, is, is planning. If, if you think ahead, it's just a matter, I think, of, of being aware um, uh, uh, and wanting to reduce your carbon footprint and wanting to reduce your budget as well. Uh, and I think those two things together uh, you know, 
are a very powerful solution to a lot of the challenges we face. Thank you very much, Paul. Yeah, and I think uh, also re reliability is a very important issue in terms of uh, production. Uh, it's a top priority that we have to make sure everything in the production is, is working, that you don't lose time, that you don't lose money, and therefore you can only use, of course, uh, tools uh, where you're sure they're really working out. So with so solar panels and this battery if this is working well, or also with local talent, this is something. I also want to, to give um, the audience, of course, um, a chance to, to ask questions, but uh, b before of that, uh, um, I'd like uh, to have uh, Richard Smith, who is uh, the sustainability manager of the BBC, as I said, and uh, who can just uh, tell us a little bit about the training, which is very interesting for all also documentary filmmakers. Hello, can you all hear me okay? Yeah, right, okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm Richard from the BBC, and I'm, uh, I'm in the very privileged position of um, being paid to worry about all these issues. So all these, all these amazing people on the, on the panel, and, and I'm sure you guys as well, um, I suspect you're probably gonna have to try to work this into whatever it is that you're working on as an additional concern. You know, you've got the cost, you've got the health and safety, you've got the quality of what's on screen. Now you've got to think about sustainability as well, and you're, you're doing that in addition to all the other things that you're thinking about. So um, at, the, at the BBC and with our colleagues at ITV originally in partnership with them, um, we, we realized very early on that, that training was absolutely key to this. You know, it's inconceivable that you would go out and try to make, um, you know, use a particular skill if you'd never had any experience in being trained to, to use it. Um, and it's exactly the same with sustainability. Um, so in brief, uh, I work in Manchester, and there's something in Manchester called Carbon Literacy. And that's, a, that's a, a project that goes right across the city that's all about trying to train everybody who lives or works or studies in Greater Manchester so that they have a day's worth of understanding about climate change and critically what they can do about it. So it's about motivation to change and it's about um, understanding. Um, and what we did through a, through a partnership with several organizations, but uh, including ITV and Doc10 studio facility there, was create um, a day's worth of learning um, specifically for people who are working in production. So the, the, the morning um, is all about the causes and impacts of climate change, which are a real eye-opener to most people, to be honest. Uh, everyone's heard of climate change. They think perhaps that they understand it. And once they've done an hour's worth of learning about the consequences of climate change, they typically realize that they didn't fully understand it and the, the severity of the problem is far, far worse than they could have imagined. That then gives them the motivation, we hope, to do something about it. And the afternoon session is all about very, very practical stuff, just like all the things that we've been hearing about today. What can you do to reduce the environmental impact of your, of your production? Whether it's out on location, whether it's the production office, whether it's um, using alternative sources to diesel generators, very, very, very practical things. Um, Again, in brief, we shared this course that we created with our colleagues at BAFTA, with whom the BBC, ITV, Sky, and a number of excellent other companies um, are in partnership with to try to, to spread awareness of environmental filmmaking, and, and both in TV and in film and, and beyond. And BAFTA now run these courses for free all across the UK, primarily in London, but all, all across the UK every single week. Um, the training is free. You can sign up for it at a, at a website called uh, wearealbert.org, because Albert, for reasons that I won't bore you with here, is the overall name of the project. Could be called Green Filmmaking. It's not, it's called Albert. That's just how it is. It's fairly random, but there we are. Um, so you can, you can go onto that website and, and, and sign up for this course. Uh, the feedback from the course has been, uh, I'm very pleased to say, really, really good. You know, everybody from executive producers and commissioners um, right down to more junior members of staff have taken the course. There's something in there for everybody. Um, the learning is very, very tangible and, it, and it's something that's recognized by, by a growing number of organizations. So if you do the training when you're at ITV and then you come to BBC and you've got that in, on your CV, that could just be the thing that makes you the person that they employ as opposed to somebody else. So we think education and training is really the key to, to getting this movement growing even further and it would be fantastic uh, if, if any of you who are, who are able to, to attend one of those courses, do so. Um, and if you want any more information about it, just, just grab me at the end. I'd be happy to tell you more. Thank you very much, Richard. So, so it's 
Are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, please wait for the mic. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, one question, as a youngster or independent filmmaker, it's already hard to get funded and commissioned, I think both in the UK and Germany. I'm originally from Germany, but I'm studying in the UK right now. So how do you assure that those people who have a low budget and so on, how do you assure that you help those people? <coughs> Um, well, I, what I would say, a couple of things. Um, one is, as Richard has said, that there's training available, which is good. Um, from a serious producer's point of view, um, I'm keen to do both things very much, to do uh, make a production which is carbon friendly and to save money. And as the two things go hand in hand, it's in my interest to make sure that everybody on the team is conversant with the issues and thinks about them. And planning is one of the most important things in TV production, however you look at it. Um, so it's just another reason uh, to uh, encourage and to help manage new filmmakers so that they get their planning right. It's often something that's quite weak in, in new filmmakers, but from my point of view, that's an enhanced responsibility I have to make sure that they do it properly. Yeah, yeah. and training is uh, also uh, something um, uh, which uh, at the Hamburg Film Fund, uh, they are having this collaboration uh, set up with the Hamburg Media School, and this uh, experience is so successful, so uh, they are doing it since uh, three years already, so that all the young filmmakers uh, uh, really get used to um, workflows uh, where, where you also take care of sustainable measures, and uh, this concept uh, has now been uh, adapted also in, in Belgium and uh, Denmark is thinking about it because uh, the new upcoming filmmakers, uh, these are uh, of course uh, the future, while um, uh, production managers uh, who are working since two or three decades, they are so much used to their routines that it's uh, sometimes, as Christiane mentioned, very hard to convince to go green, but uh, younger people are much more open, and as we also can see here, just the uh, young people, a lot of them are females all the time, but you wanted to also add something? If, if you have a low budget, you should, you should do it in an uh, environmental friendly way, because it is really less expensive. I mean, you see the, the ideas, uh, I mean, to, to, to hire a person of, of the country itself, yeah, we did that in Ukraine uh, because the sound, uh, the sound man was afraid to go to the east to this war zone. We hired uh, a sound man there. He got, uh, I think, 30 euro, and our sound man is getting 450 euro. Yeah, um, and of course, so he, he hadn't go hadn't go there. I mean, we 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 economized the hotel and all that. I need to have this example because very often you said this, that you, that you use uh, uh, stuff and, and uh, people from the country. It is, I don't see any, any uh, uh, example where it is more expensive to do it on environmental friendly. The other, everything is environment, what is environmental friendly is less expensive. Even yeah. food, if, if you don't uh, have this uh, factory produced food which you heat up in a microwave, even if you cook about yourself and you have organic food, that comes down to less money, right? Yes, I mean, uh, one, one of the, the, let's say, CIs is, uh, in my company is that when, when we are filming, we do at least one hour of break at the day. We have to, know, as you too, as everybody, man, learn about 10. 10 hours, days, yeah, and uh, we do a break. This can be organized. So why should we go to McDonald's? It's not, not at all needed. We, so we have, we have a person which is uh, a trainee and who is, who is organizing the food, and then the food is coming out of, um, of vegetarian uh, uh, restaurants which we bring, bring to the set there, yeah? So, um, this is if you clear why should we give them meat? I mean, it doesn't make any sense, and it is not more expensive. It is uh, quicker and better, and then you have a crew after four or five uh, hours of working, 
uh, doing your arrest. This you have to organize a little bit. The planning is very important. And, um, and, and nobody leaves the set. We do that there sometimes uh, under the tent or whatever, we, but what we have in our cars. Uh, but it is vegetarian, it's clear. Sometimes the, the masculine people are a little bit afraid about that. I don't know what they're doing in the evening. But uh, in, in the company itself, as I told you, vegetarian and on, on shooting, yeah, which is organized by the company. Yeah, if you, uh, freelancers are sometimes very strange in this subject, as you know, yeah, yeah, I have to be strong, I need meat and all that. And then they, they see the people from our company and say, uh, am I not strong or whatever, yeah, I'm vegetarian. Yeah, but um, this you can organize, but it's cheaper. Carl, Carl your company sounds like paradise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just a normal company, uh, really not. No, not normal. That's another that's question. Right? Please. On the money side? Please. Yeah, yeah. please go ahead. Uh, no, I completely agree. Um, another question is, um, during the commissioning process, do you take that into con uh, consideration that one producer goes green and so on? Is there any other politiation or anything like that today, both in the UK and Germany? Like, for example, you, you are a commissioner editor and you receive an application for, for being commissioned or you com mm -hmm. want to commission a film and so on. I don't think we're at that place yet. Uh, no, not, not, in, not in the BBC. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You spoke about that. Huh? Yeah, um, uh, so me and my colleagues are work, working with BBC commissioning and uh, obviously the, uh, the stuff that we produce in-house at the BBC through what used to be called TV and is now called Studios, um, they, they have to complete a carbon footprint. So the in-house productions at the BBC have to complete a carbon footprint, and the overwhelming majority of them do. So it's like filming in it, uh, filling in a risk assessment or something like that, they have to do it. And in some parts of the BBC, you know, you, you, if you're sitting in a green light meeting, a, a, a meeting early on in, in production, pre-production really, and, if, and you've not got your predicted carbon footprint in there, you don't get the go ahead. So, you know, th th we're moving in that direction already, and, um, I think it's likely that we'll be working more and more with, with the independent production companies to, to take us on this journey as well. Um, through, again, through the BAFTA partnership that I mentioned earlier, uh, we've got this carbon calculator, um, which, which literally hundreds and hundreds of, of production companies are signed up to use. I think it's about 450 are signed up to use it now. Um, it's free to use, it's very simple. Anyone in this room could get a login if they, if they email the people that you could find on that website I just mentioned. Um, and uh, if you can proactively say that you're using uh, this tool, which is, which is called Albert, um, then again, that's, that's you're just one more further step along the road. I'm not, you know, I, I, I agree with Paul, it's not, I, I'm not, I don't want to overclaim it and say this is the thing that's going to get you your, your program commission, but it certainly can't do you any harm because it shows that you're on the front foot, you know, you're, you're, you're taking the lead, you're being positive about it as opposed to just being told, you know, this is, you know, well, we've got to do this because now the BBC or Sky or whoever it is is telling us to do it. And again, at, at Sky, um, you have to do a carbon footprint or you don't get the money. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. So everyone's going at slightly different speeds, but everyone overall, because we're all working together on it, is going in the right direction because we're all aware of what each, each, each other is doing. Uh, and we're competitive in a, in a good, friendly way about it. Yeah, that's a good thing about it, because in Germany there is uh, no carbon calculator used yet. In Belgium it is a com uh, condition um, to calculate your carbon footprint. In France, for example, there is a carbon calculator, um, but uh, it's, uh, it's um, not a condition to use it, so the situation in, in uh, any European country is quite different, but in the UK it's uh, really the best situation right now. I, I think it's wonderful what you're doing in mm -hmm. the area of television. And, uh, in film it's uh, also a very different situation. But is and, no, Sorry, Christiane, when, when, with this green shooting card, is it uh, what's in it for the producers? If they get it, if they get it, do they get some money for that? Or no. It's easier to no. get doesn't, money from the commission. Doesn't make any difference no. so far. Uh -huh. no. uh -huh. But we are working on this. It's a green no. label, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You make, you make it visible. You make your mm. behavior visible, mm. and that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much for this. It's very interesting and inspiring. Um, I come from the United States. I run a documentary lab at MIT. 
And I'm just wondering, you had mentioned Hollywood had some best practices, but also, do you know, is there, are there ways to get training or bring the training to Boston, to Massachusetts? Um, I, I know uh, on the East Coast, um, there's an uh, eco-supervisor, her name is Emily uh, O'Brien, and she is very uh, in inspiring because she has worked uh, with a couple of independent films, but also for studio films. And she is uh, the one uh, who was working on uh, Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man uh, part two. Mm. She was the eco-supervisor there. And all she did was just uh, um, avoiding and management of uh, waste. And this, this had really uh, impressive results, like just by avoiding plastic bottles like this. If you think you have a crew of 300 people or so, and everybody's drinking three or four bottles per day, and you're shooting seven weeks, that it's all it's up to uh, masses of plastic waste. And uh, she said by just avoiding them, if you would have put them uh, a chain out of all these bottles, you could have probably surrounded the island of Manhattan and also the other uh, waste um, they uh, sold and uh, recycled. You could have filled with it two and a half times the Statue of Liberty. And uh, they also were saving about $40,000 uh, for, for this Sony production. So this was uh, really um, impressive. And she was really hands-on on the set and doing the waste management, advising the crew. And uh, in New York, they also um, had um, an organization which were, is collecting and recycling props but uh, they had uh, to close down because there was no funding anymore. But uh, uh, Emily is uh, having a company, it's called Earth Angels, and uh, I think they Earth Angels, and uh, you can uh, uh, Google it on the web. And so I think um, if you try to get in touch with them, uh, all these people also in the independent film community, they do have uh, networks and Boston or New York, it's not so uh, far away. And I, I'm pretty sure if, if you call them up, maybe you can get one of these guys coming up to Boston and figure something out. This is also about uh, creativity, of course. And uh, if there's a demand, they are, they are more than, than happy to do something. So please uh, try to get in, in uh, touch with her. And I also can give you my card. And if anybody has questions, you also can contact me or the, the other ones. I think we are all uh, uh, very happy to um, do some more networking and uh, green the world all together, if any, any possible. So uh, please, uh, later on, if there are questions coming up, you can uh, always ask. Please. Can I ask, um, what would be your top tip to make Sheffield Dogfest a little bit greener? Avoid this, first of all, <laughs> plastic. Uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 it's, um, it's also one of um, the goals to create a green uh, events, so to make events in a greener way. And I think uh, it's like in film production, it's like in real life, and this is true for, for events too. Uh, the, the, the biggest carbon um, emission generators are always energy and uh, transportation. So it comes to energy, it, it would be great if every facility or building or cinema is powered with re renewable energy. That makes a big difference. I, I don't know how this building is powered or what about the theaters. In Germany, we have a lot of theaters which are already are uh, powered with uh, renew renewable energy. And uh, I'm also working on it to uh, make them greener, that they don't serve plastic bottles to the audience and not only show documentary films, which uh, are very green, but they, that they also do it uh, uh, behind uh, the counter and uh, don't uh, serve so much in, in, in plastic bottles and so on. And so this, this is also a big issue, also in terms of awareness, of course, um, to avoid any plastic and also to educate the audience that you do um, some waste management, that you have different bins, like they have on television stations for paper, for plastic, for uh, bio and, and food uh, rests, and also for, for the rest, which can't be uh, recycled in some way. And this is also um, um, raising awareness and educating people that they should learn. This is also a 
an issue which um, comes up on, on, on television. If people see p um, actors in a film uh, or in a documentary, um, these are all role models. And if you see it's a normal habit to separate uh, your waste, then, then you just do it and uh, mm -hmm. with also with glass bottles and so on. And uh, of course, with transportation, this is also something we came partly by train, partly by plane, and I, I go back to Europe by train uh, tomorrow. But of often, of course, we are in, in this um, business. We are still taking planes, which which is not very good. So transportation is uh, also a key element and a key uh, issue. And uh, of course, you are also. Um, have the issue of, of time that you have to be somewhere because the pressure for everybody in, in production and so on is uh, time is um, precious but uh, on, on, on the other hand we all have a responsibility and um, so uh, if it comes to, to food of course it would be great if he has a, a lot of uh, organic uh, food uh, available and um, so it's it's like in in, in private uh, life basically all measures uh, you you can think of you can uh, do in a in a greener way but uh, it all has to do of course also with with the will to do it and with awareness and with policy i mean in in, in germany if we would have the television stations requiring uh, all the productions to go greener it would make a big difference then there would be also more suppliers who would offer LED lamps and electric cars, and uh, it's still very, very little, and uh, I hope that there will be much more demand, and therefore it, it comes also back to young filmmakers. This uh, gives us a lot of hope if there are more people interesting and that they are wanting to do it. Yes, please? Um, to answer your question, um, um, First of all, get politic. Uh, demonstrate against uh, carbon, against coal power plants. Um, blockade nuclear power plants. Blockade it, really. Blockade all those power plants, coal power plants. We have it in Germany and in the East and in, in Cologne. Um, and you, because you can have the best waste management, whatever you can uh, imagine, but um, in, in, in UK we still have 21% of electricity coming out, coming out of uh, nuclear power plants and they haven't uh, increased this number. It's uh, unbelievable for that. And we should, we should, we have to be, we have to fight against that because it is, I mean, it's our future. My, mine too, I'm 62 years old, so, um, I would like uh, your younger, but um, we, we should, in the next 20 years, we really uh, will we'll see. Um, either we get it or not. Either we have an explosion of nuclear power plants because of IS, of, of, of terrorism, or not. Um, we will have 150 million climate uh, refugees in the next uh, in 10, 15 years. So that is the reality. Yeah, this, reality. Is, this is really scary. There was a study uh, saying that uh, now there were about 2 million refugees coming to Europe, but in about 10 years, when uh, in Africa, it's not that the temperature will go up 1 or 2 or 3 degrees, but maybe 10 degrees in, in some villages and areas and so on. And if people can't live there anymore, uh, of course, they don't have a choice. Then there are 50 million refugees refugees coming coming over and uh, but there are solutions uh, for for many things but we, we we can change the world we just uh, have to do it and there were all these great commitments we, we, at the uh, cop 21 in, in Paris but uh, the question is also of course what what is really happening but can. what every every single person can can do we, about we, it we, we, we can that's why we talk we talk about energy rebellion or the energy revolution what what is really I mean if you really do that uh, to coming up uh, then we can change it. You see the history, what has changed in Germany, whatever. We have had revolutions if we need a revolution. And apart of that, we should reduce the consumption of, weed, uh, of meat and uh, less flight. That is one part of the film, too. Paul, do you, do you also have a, a very practical one for 
<laughs> for, for, for Sheffield, especially for Sheffield. Well, I don't know, if someone could invent something that runs on rain power, we'd, uh, <laughs> we'd be doing well. Wait. Rain power? I'm yeah. glad this has been recorded, the whole session. <laughs> so um, let's see what they make out of that next year. There are, uh, actually, there are solar panel cells developed since uh, April, uh, which also will um, generate energy if it's raining. They are working on it. And I think this would be a, um, a real uh, improvement if you n just don't need sun, but also if, there, if it works, uh, if it rains. And any more questions? Finito. Finito. Okay. okay. Red lights are flashing. Yeah. Red lights. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay.